In today's video, I'm going to show you how to easily breed perfect IV competitive ready Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But before we get into today's video, please subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can always unsubscribe later if you would like to. Now, there are a few prerequisites we need to do before we can jump into the breeding process itself. The first thing that we're going to need to get, which is going to be a huge time saver, is going to be a flame body Pokemon. Now, the ability flame body is obviously in competitive. It has a 30% chance to burn an opponent if a, a contact move is made with your Pokemon, but outside of competitive battling, it does have another effect. Whenever you have a Pokemon with flame body in your party, it cuts down the steps required for an egg to hatch by 50%, which is huge, a huge time saver, especially if you are hatching a lot of eggs. There are a number of Pokemon within the Paldea region that have the ability flame body. There's Fletchinder. This one's a good one because it is available very early on in the games. You can see it's right next to the starting point where you start out your journey so an easy one to pick up you're going to have other options like roly coley like car call their options pretty common options as well available in the eastern areas of the region as you can see here it's roly coley in this area towards the east and then car call as well in the desert sort of areas where you'd imagine to find these pokemon we've also got the option of char cadet as well this will have the flame body ability obviously this thing appears everywhere around the paldea region the only issue is it is a bit of a rare spawn so it might be harder to get than some of the other options we're listing here and the final one i'll list just so you've got a few options is larvesta it does spawn in desert you can see here on the map where it does spawn but having a flame body ability pokemon it isn't essential but it definitely is a huge time saver the next thing that we're going to need to help us out not essential of course are ingredients for a particular sandwich which is going to help us with the frequency that eggs appear in our picnic so we are currently in mesagoza west this is the pokemon center that we are spawned in on from here, you can see two shops over there. We've got Shurkans is the first place that we want to head to. And in here, this shop right here, it's easy enough to get to, you can't miss it, is gonna be Bananas. So Bananas is gonna be the first one that we're gonna wanna get. Obviously, we've got a bunch of them, so we're not gonna pick anything up. Nothing else from here. And then we're gonna head down to the bakery. I think it's Artisan Bakery. I'm not sure what its name is. I can never remember. But this bakery right here, and we are gonna buy butter. It is the Artisan Bakery. Okay, we got it right. We're gonna buy peanut butter, a bunch of peanut butter. Make sure you've got peanut butter. Make sure you've got actual butter as well. And the other tip I would say is just to pick up a bunch of silver picks. Now, it goes without saying, you probably already know this, but just in case you don't, you can't make a sandwich without a pick. If you run out of picks, you can't make sandwiches. So just make sure you're stocked up on the picks. Doesn't matter which ones you've got. The cheapest ones always are the best option for me. And we've got those. Again, we are in Mesagoza West, the Pokemon Center here. As soon as you're here, you want to just look over to the right and take this route and go down the stairs here and we want to be heading to this deli bird presents shop here and you'll be able to see it there'll be a big deli bird sign on it and this is another important place where we can pick up two very important items so the first item that we're going to get and i'm not going to say when this is available because i honestly don't know and i don't want to put out misinformation if you know when this item becomes available if you've got it at a certain stage in your game it'd be great to hear from you let me know down in the comment section below and i can pin it for future people for reference so they know how to obtain it but the item we're talking about is the destiny knot it is going to be available for twenty thousand poker dollars or twenty thousand league points but this is an essential item in the whole breeding process for passing down IV. so pick this up we've already got one and the other item is going to be in general goods again just come back down to the bottom of this list and the other item is the everstone you may already have an everstone that you've picked up around the area because they are an, a pickup item but if you don't this is a great place to come and get one very cheap as well but this is an item where you can attach it to a pokemon that you're breeding with and it will make sure that the, the nature of the pokemon that's holding it is always passed down to the baby pokemon so if you've got a ditto with a jolly nature and you want your baby pokemon to always have that jolly nature make sure the ditto is holding the everstone essentially that's how it works the next thing you're going to need is a ditto it's not mandatory but it definitely makes the process a lot easier especially if you're breeding competitive like perfect iv pokemon now i did a video on the channel how to get ditto the areas it spawns and the best ways to catch a high IV ditto. There are a few areas around the Paldea region where you can get ditto. I'll put them up on the screen now. Predominantly 
Burgundy in this band towards the northwest region of the Paldea region. But I have done a video, like I say, and the best place to get high IV dittos is going to be from Terror Raids. Five star and six star Terror Raids are going to be the best place for you to pick up your higher IV dittos. Although not essential, you can do this process with a three, two, one IV ditto if you desire. It will take a bit longer, obviously, but it is possible. Now, the other essential item that you're going to need and you're going to only be able to get this after you've beat the Elite Four is the IV judge the iv judge is a way for you to go into your boxes and check the ivs how good they are with your pokemon you'll normally come into your pokemon boxes you'll see a screen like this on all your other pokemon just showing the raw stats of that particular pokemon now once you beat the elite four all you need to do is visit a pokemon center and the lady at the pokemon center will inform you about the iv judge and now how it's a function when you go into your pokemon boxes and you can toggle the plus button on your controller and check the Pokemon's IVs. Now they will show up in descriptions like this. You're gonna have best for perfect, which is gonna be 31. You're gonna have fantastic, which is 30. You're gonna have decent, pretty good, and no good at all. So they are the options. I'll put them all on the screen now so you can see what each description of a stat means in regards to the parameters for knowing what range an IV sits in. Okay, with everything that we've got so far, we've got the Destiny Knot, the Everstone, we've got a Flame Body Pokemon, on, we've got a ditto and we do have a Pokemon that we are looking at breeding to get those perfect IVs on. So what we want to do now is head out into an area where we can set up our picnics. Now we've got a nice area to set up our picnic. The first things that we're going to want to check are that we've got the two Pokemon in our party that we're going to want to breed with. We've got a Tinkerton and that's all we want to be breeding at the minute. We want to concentrate on that until that is the perfect Pokemon that we've got. We've got a ditto in our party as well and to make sure that we're passing the ivs down from the ditto we want to place the destiny knot on this pokemon so how the destiny knot works is when the destiny knot is attached to one of the pokemon that you're breeding with it will mean that five random ivs from both parents it can be completely random which ivs they are but it will be a combination of five ivs from both parents will always be passed down to the baby pokemon so this is why it's always good to have a ditto or as close to a perfect IV ditto to breed with as possible because then you're increasing your chances of passing down those higher IV. Thankfully for this process, I do have a high IV Tinker Tonk. This is from a five star Terror Raid. So this one has got four perfect IVs to start with. So we wanna pass down all of the IVs between these two. We're gonna have good chances. There are nine perfect IVs between these two Pokemon out of a possible 12. So it means there is a good chance of having at least five of those perfect IVs passed down to one of the baby Pokemon, especially if we're doing a lot of them. Now, the next thing that we wanna make sure we've got is a empty box ready for the eggs to go into. Once you start a picnic and you start to collect eggs, these eggs are automatically gonna be put into a box. So they're not gonna go into your party, they're gonna go straight into your box. So you're gonna have to exit the picnic to come in and then collect them. So like I said, we've got an area where we want to set up a picnic we want to just set a picnic up we've got a destiny knot on our ditto we don't have a preferable nature that we want to pass down to the baby pokemon on the tinkerton or the ditto at the moment so we don't need to worry about the everstone the next thing that we want to do is recall coriadon because we don't need you here for this is make a sandwich because it will speed the process of eggs being produced although it's not necessary it is something that speeds the whole process up. And when you're breeding competitive Pokemon, the big thing about that is making sure that you can do this as quickly as possible. Now, the sandwich that we're gonna look for is the Great Peanut Butter Sandwich. You can see the meal power that it gives you. It is gonna give you level two egg power, and that's what we're concerned about here. The egg power just means how quickly eggs are gonna be produced between your Pokemon that are breeding in your picnic, so your egg frequency will occur a lot quicker. So what we wanna do is just get pick a silver pick and create this sandwich. Now, sandwich effects will last for 30 minutes. So as soon as we made this, we're gonna have 30 minutes, as long as we make it right, to take advantage of this power until we'd have to do another sandwich and create uh, the exact same again if we're still breeding at this stage. But we should produce a lot of eggs in that amount of time and uh, be able to 
do this process, especially with the higher IV Pokemon that we've got. It shouldn't take too long for us to do. But like I say, if you've not got a perfect IV ditto as I've got and you're starting off with a Tinkerton that's maybe got no perfect IVs, this process is possible still. You just example, you use the same process as we're using now, but it may just take a bit longer. So you're going to just have a bit of patience. Obviously, once you get established with breeding a bit more, you manage to get some perfect IV dittos or five perfect IV dittos or four perfect IV dittos. This will all become a lot more straightforward. As you can see here on the screen, once you've made the sandwich, you've got that egg power two. Level two is what we want. You can use egg power level one as well. And you can also use the restaurants as well to get egg power. You don't need to generally rely on the sandwiches to, to get these egg power. Food vendors will have options that produce egg power. It might be just level one, but that might just be enough for you to start speeding things up. So we can literally just sit back and relax really for a minute because the basket should fill up with eggs. Now it is worth noting that the basket can only hold 10 eggs at a time. So it is worth checking every so often because after that, you're not gonna produce any more eggs. But um, if you peek in the basket, doesn't seem to be anything in the basket so far. Maybe we need to wake you up, Tinkerton. Get your hammer. Nothing in the basket just yet. So we're just gonna sit and wait. And once we look in the basket this time, uh, there seems to be a Pokemon egg inside. Do you want to take it? Yes, I do. Yes. So we'll take that one. We'll have another look. Peek inside the basket. Doesn't seem to be anything there at the minute. And um, we'll just have to sit and wait. It is going to, it is taking a bit longer than I initially thought for these eggs to be produced uh, this time around. And uh, as soon as I started getting the ball out to start playing with the Pokemon, I don't know if that's got any correlation with how quickly eggs are made, but eggs did start popping up. It could be just a coincidence. Doesn't seem to be anything in the basket. So even with the egg power on, sometimes it can take a bit longer for eggs to appear in the basket. It's not gonna be just super quick sometimes. Depends on the Pokemon that you've got. The RNG can affect it as well in the game. So normally you'll go to your basket with the egg power activated and you're gonna have a basket full of eggs after a minute or so. But sometimes like this, this is the first time for me when I've been doing breeding where the eggs are taking a little bit longer. So it is just something to keep in mind. Okay, we've got a few eggs, so we can just use this as an example. We'll pack up for the moment. We want our flame body Pokemon. Fletchinder. We'll put our Ditto, who's holding the Destiny up there. Now, the first thing that we really want to do with these eggs is try, we're probably going to just, if you haven't got the natures that you really want, is to tr just breed a bunch of them to begin with because then you're gonna just eventually get the nature that you want from the eggs. And from that point on, you can then start breeding down that nature with the Everstone. Until you've got the nature that you really want, you can use nature mints. They're really accessible in this game, so it is an option. But if you wanna be a bit more of a traditionalist, then you can uh, you can use this method with the Everstone as well, just to save you some cash, I guess, as well. So once you've got the eggs in your party, you've got your flame body user in your party, you wanna just kind of run around with these eggs and see if you can hatch a poke. So once we've hatched all of them, we do have one more we can hatch as well. So we'll just hatch this one while we're at it. I'll just pop these in the box for the minute and then we'll check the IVs. Uh, we've got four perfect IVs passed down on this one. We've got three passed down on this one. Nothing, then we've got five passed down on that one. Just the speed, not that great on that one. Um, and then, yeah, we've not got a perfect one yet. This one's not too bad though. If we could just get the speed passed down on this one, that's pretty good. Natures though, we've got nothing with the jolly nature yet. So we have to see and keep our fingers crossed this last egg will have the jolly nature and it's a lot faster i feel in scarlet and violet than it has been in previous games so this is the final egg that we've got before going for round two that we want nature is serious and we've got that no good speed passing down uh, but other than that it's not too bad so what we could use is one of these to breed with to be honest we could use this one in particular it's got probably a better spread than the one that we were using so and we can just pop this into our party we'll put fletchinder back in here as well because we don't want to get any fletchinder legs eggs and we can come to a nice area get off our mount pokemon and we will set up another picnic now we should still have the egg power active so getting eggs will still be sped up okay there's the fifth egg so we can pack up this now and 
we can hatch our next five eggs. Okay, so that is all the Tinkerton and we can have a look at the IV spread, see if we've got anything good here. So we've got that speed pass down again. Um, nothing good there, just three pass down here. Um, there we go, we've got it. Okay, that is a perfect Tinker Tink. It is perfect. It has got the best HP, attack, defense, speed, and special defense. So that is a flawless Pokemon. We haven't got the Jolly, and we've got a Jolly Nature one here. So what we want to look for between the two is which one's going to be better to breed down with. So yeah, this one is better because it's got four perfect IVs. This one's only got three perfect IVs. So we can breed this one with the Ditto. We can breed this one with the Ditto get the jolly and then try the process over one more time so we do have a perfect iv one which we can definitely use if we want to use a nature mint on it but otherwise we're gonna have to try and and repeat the process again but now what we can do is we can give this tinker ton tinker tink the everstone and that is going to be a huge plus for us to make sure that everyone after this is going to have that that jolly nature so we'll give the everstone to tinker tink we've got the destiny knot on the ditto and we can just set up another picnic okay we should have enough eggs now to do another round of hatching okay we got our next round of eggs we can just run around and get them hatched so let's have a look and see what the ivs are you can see that they've all got that jolly nature this one's very close to being perfect and uh, this one's not good enough this one has no not got perfect ivs got a bunch of them very close as well this one uh got that zero iv speed and zero iv speed so not brilliant all of them this one's pretty perfect if you wanted a trick room one it's just got the wrong nature it's not a bad one to keep of course you can change your nature on it with a nature mint but that fantastic defense gives you 30 defense anyway these ones in the box though this one is probably the closest one with the four perfect ivs and then i think we have another one here which has got four perfect IVs so these are two of the better ones I don't think it really makes a difference which one we use so as you can see we're getting very close to this final breed we've got the the nature finally we've got the everstone on that so that'll always be passing down and you can see the combination of perfect IVs between the two Pokemon will match up so all we need is the best perfect IV from the ditto passed down to the Tinker Tink and then it will have a perfect spread as i say we're not worrying about the special attack okay we got five more eggs so we should be able to do hopefully the last round of hatching and that's our last one so we'll be able to check all the ivs on these new hatchlings to see if we've got that perfect iv spread now so i'll just take the camera off we'll be able to see everything Right, best, best, no good in defense, but everything else pretty good. Oh, so close, so close. And there we go, we've got it. Okay, we've got it. And it has the Terra Steel type as well. So we have got a perfect breed for our Tinker Tink now. And it's only take, it has taken a little while because of the amount of eggs that were produced. Okay, so we can change the markings on it. Perfect HP, attack, defense, special attack. Very good, but not what we're concerned about with perfect special defense, IV, and perfect speed as well. So this is perfect with that jolly nature. It saves us having to go out and buy any nature mints and any bottle caps or anything like that. Now we can just level it up and we can get this thing ready to battle for competitive in no time so you can literally use this process with anything as long as you've got a ditto or even just two pokemon that have good ivs you just need the destiny not to pass those ivs down so what you're doing is looking for two pokemon say your ditto here has a perfect special defense iv and this tinker tink has a perfect attack iv but everything else is not good use the destiny not until you get a baby with those two perfect ivs on it and then you switch the tinker tink out with the better one and you repeat the process until you get that perfect five iv pokemon and it can be done it will just take a bit longer if you don't have the 
better breeding parents but if you've got a better set of breeding parents then it won't take long at all like you can see this is my first perfect breed in pokemon scarlet and violet and learning the new mechanics the everstone still works like it does the destiny not still works like it does there are a bunch of ways to get really good high level pokemon around the region using five star terror raids six star terror raids it's easy enough to do a lot of this i bear in mind you're going to need the iv checker so it is late post game content so you're not going to be able to do it until you finish the games but this guide hopefully will give you an idea of everything you need to put into practice for you to start breeding perfect pokemon pretty easily in pokemon scarlet and violet i hope you found today's video useful friends this is very early days with these games being out and not all information about breeding is known yet so i'm likely to do an updated guide very soon when we've got a bit more information on everything to do with breeding and how to really kind of streamline this process. But as far as it goes for now, these are the basic steps that you're gonna need in the principles to breed perfect IV Pokemon. Go out, get a ditto, get a high IV ditto, and then catch the Pokemon that you're wanting to breed it with, and then kind of just repeat the processes that I've done in this video, using the Everstone, using the Destiny Knot, and using the Sandwiches to boost the egg power. Obviously the egg power is not essential, but it does help speed things up. I dread to think how long this would have took if I didn't have egg power because of how long it actually took for the ditto and the tinker tink to produce eggs which is way crazier but that's how, how it goes sometimes with these pairings when you put certain Pokemon together that don't like each other too much so they don't produce eggs as quickly as well you've got to remember tinker tink is a female only Pokemon so it might be a reason why it takes a bit longer to breed than the other ones but we did get there in the end I guess I hope you found this guide useful if you have please drop a like on the video do consider scrubbing subscribing to the channel for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then friends, take care of yourselves and bye bye!